Greetings, and welcome to episode 64. Today's episode was supposed to be about chakras. That's the episode I promised would be next, but I've had a few setbacks, schedule changes at work, other various things I had to deal with. So I haven't made a video in almost a week. Not since last Monday, as a matter of fact. But I'm back in the swing of things. I think it was last Monday. I think it's been over a week since I made a video. But uh, I'm trying to get back in the swing of things, and uh, I'll try and explain a little bit more about why I'm not making, why I haven't been making my videos. But uh, today's video is going to be about death, because I've experienced a few losses in my life, and someone that is very dear to me, my ex-mother-in-law is terminally ill at this at this time and uh, I just spoke to her on the phone the other day and it just just hearing from me seemed to raise her spirits so that's what we're going to talk about it's not going to be what you think bear with me but if we're ready let's get started now sit back relax and enjoy So, death. I'm not going to presume to know it all, but I've had a few experiences in my life where I've experienced the loss of others. My stepfather, grandmother, my little brother when I was younger, uh, my ex fiance from years ago died of uh, cancer. And uh, just some things I went through in my childhood that helped make me the man I am today but yeah like I said earlier uh, the whole reason for this episode was because someone special to me is terminally ill and they might not make it through it I think she will because she's a fighter and I was there when she had heart surgery and she's still kicking today so to me that speaks volumes but my ex-wife is terrified that her mother's going to pass and I guess this episode is for her to help ease her suffering if she does pass I don't think she's going to but if she does I mean I could be wrong if she does I want her to be able to get a little peace of mind uh, having experienced a little something myself and I'm not talking about experiencing someone else passing experiencing myself it's not what people think it is. I don't remember any bright light. It was just boom, transition. You were where you were. It's infinity plus one. It's only scary because you're not used to it. It's like going to a new town or a new school or a new place you're just not used to it remember the first day of school ever when you were a kid that nervous feeling or if you have kids how nervous your kid gets that's what you experience we're not afraid to die really we're afraid we're gonna miss something if we die we're afraid that it's going to hurt when we die we're not really scared of the transition itself and something happened to me when I was very young and I hadn't yet been taught to fear the transition and so I didn't but I ended up in a coma for two weeks and I can't tell you how long I was dead I just know that everything changed from that point and I could probably I can remember I was a year and a half. I can remember everything before it, and I can remember everything after it, but everything during that moment was on a completely different level. It wasn't a dream. It wasn't real. It wasn't unreal. It was just, it was, it just was. And then fast forward, and then the memories start again in this plane in this what we call reality <coughs> 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 
So is there an adjustment period? Yes. Can this adjustment period be considered hell? Depends on how you lived your life. Because it'll be a lot more difficult for certain people to adjust depending on how they live their life, which is why those rules are in place. They're not, those rules aren't in place to help to make you control your life and you have to do it this way. You were never have to do it that way. Anything that would cause you to cut yourself off from source, shame, embarrassment, don't do it. And all of the things that they say don't do are the things that are, will lead you the quickest to cut yourself off from source due to shame, embarrassment, or pridefulness, or whatever. Well, these same things hinder the transition process. And the woman I'm speaking of, I don't think she'll have as bad a transition process as she might think you would be surprised the things that are going to trip you up when you die it's not going to be the time you punched a guy for no reason it'll be the something small like I broke a promise I wish I hadn't broke that promise it'll be re little tiny little regrets it won't be the major things that you, you, you you're thinking of that's going to cause you, the major things are going to cause you to suffer. The little things are going to cause you to reflect. And in that reflection, there is a certain amount of suffering, and I guess you could call that hell. But it's just a transition period. It lasts as long or as short as you like. As you, as fast as you get through that, that's as long as hell lasts. Every soul goes through it. It's just a transition period. Where you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn. Now, that's somebody trying to shape the transition period for you. Because if you're told your whole life that you're going to hell if you do all these things, then you're probably, and you believe that, you're probably going to go to hell until you figure out, wait a minute, this is just a transition period and I don't have to experience it this way. <laughs> And the person in question, I think there's enough people that love her, and I think that she knows that nobody has ever done anything bad enough to actually end up in a lake of fire. We, everything we do is done by what we believe to be at the time. Good motives, good intentions, and yes, they say the path to hell is paved with the good intentions, but if you honestly believe you were doing the right thing, then you're just looking at, I don't care who you are, you're just looking at a, a bumpier transition period than somebody else. If you're Hitler, you're going to have a really bumpy transition period. But unless you truly believed in that lake of fire, you're not going to get that lake of fire. And I think that people don't like that idea that, what do you mean they won't burn in hell? <laughs> they want to know that justice is served. <laughs> That's not how it works. And it took me years to come to terms with the fact that I don't get to decide if this person gets punished. And I don't get to control what that punishment is. I learned that a long time ago, and it took me a long time to get over that. Like, well, that's just not fair. Well, how is it fair that you get to control their punishment? You're not the only person they've hurt. You're just one of many. Why should you get the ultimate say-so in how they get punished when the odds are they didn't do the worst they did to you? I mean, granted, they could have. You could have been the worst thing they ever did happen to you at their hands. Right? But there's still a lot of people that came before you that still got shitty treatment. And let's not forget, you're not perfect either. Whatever you wish for them, you can expect a fair amount of that for yourself because... 
There is no greater teacher than hypocrisy. There is no greater strength than integrity. Check yourself. If you've ever done anything to anyone, then you're going to be dipping your toes in that lake also. Because we can't be hypocrites. Well, I didn't do what he did. Yes, but suffering is relative. And you may not have done what he did, but you may have caused someone to suffer to that degree, relatively speaking. Because suffering is relative. Something that might be a, a nuisance to me might completely break somebody else. Likewise, something that completely is just breaks me is just a nuisance to somebody else. So you, you never know. Someone told me that they admired me. This was uh, back when I was uh, 15 years ago. Wow. Almost half my life ago. They said I was actually 25, 24, 23. I was 23. <laughs> Let's keep going backwards. No, I was 23 years old, <coughs> and, and uh, it was a girl I was dating. She said she admired me, which was odd to me because I admired her for her inner strength, and she just kept going, and she would tell me these stories of her childhood, and what's funny is I never told her any of mine. I told her a few of them, but she said she admired me because... I could stride over the mountains, but I didn't get tripped up by the molehills. And that she saw herself as climbing molehills, or climbing the mountains. No, climbing the molehills, but not getting over the mountains. But that's not what I saw. So suffering is relative. I saw myself in her shoes, and she saw herself in my shoes. And together we admired each other. <laughs> but yeah, I, I thought that was amazing. That's the, my, that was my first lesson in the, the relativity of suffering. You can never, you never know. I've talked to many people that went through similar experiences to what I grew up with. And it completely broke them. And they can't, they can't seem to go on without someone there to, to hitch them up. And, yeah, come on, I got you. And me, I've been rolling solo since I was 16, and I'm fine to roll solo. I mean, I'm married, but if I was, I, I did excellent as a truck driver. <laughs> because I don't have to have anybody there. I, I can hold myself up. Those things didn't break me. To me, looking back, man, it's just annoying that it happened. But to someone else, it, it broke them. Someone else went through similar things or is in prison now for becoming a criminal. Or worse, becoming a murderer. Suffering is relative. You can't tell a man, well, that shouldn't bother you. You can say, wow, I did not expect that to bother you so much. Because I was judging you on my fortitude. Or how about in reverse? I can't believe that doesn't bother you as much as it bothers me. And if if anything I'm saying upsets you, I'm speaking from my personal point of view, my personal experiences. Uh, when I experience loss and death, it doesn't destroy me because I know what's going to happen to them. They're going to go through a transitional period and the universe wastes nothing. Gaia wastes nothing. That soul will be recycled. It might not come through as human, but I am of the belief that when a person is born, they're born into every different aspect of this planet. When they're born, a tree starts to sprout. A lion cub is born. That's where you get your animal totems from. I think there's another you somewhere. Probably, and, and don't look for them within your own genotype, your own, it, like, I know there's another me running around. 
I've dreamt about him. There's two other me's running around. One lives in Europe, one lives in Asia. One's a cop, one's a priest. I've dreamt about him. And I've no doubt they've dreamt about me. I believe that we exist kind of like a video game, how you make multiple characters for this one game, but you focus on the one. You focus on your favorite. So I'm not focusing on them. I'm not focusing on the lion. I'm not focusing on the toucan. I'm not focusing on the manta ray or the whale or the Asian detective or the, I think he's French, priest. I'm focusing on this guy because obviously t it's something in me says that this guy needs the most help. So I'm focusing on this one. Which draws to me a movie I saw once. Uh, the nines, only it was God who had the multiple characters. I think we all get those multiple characters. Let's face it. If we were to go through this and learn it as, as one being and only in incarnate as a singular in every lifetime, you know how long it would take to learn all this? I'm not even talking about different dimensions. I'm talking right here on Earth right now on this plane in this what we call reality there is three human forms of me there's this one there's the Asian detective and there's the French priest and that's not even to con that, that doesn't even include the animal the, the different different animal totems I've discovered because nobody has just one animal totem we just usually gravitate toward our strongest one And if, if you are like me and you can see within them what their animal totem is, that's the one they close, most closely identify with. Like my daughter, Raven, hers is a giraffe. That's her closest animal totem. Consequently, she loves giraffes. My wife is a dolphin. She loves dolphins. Mine is dragons. So probably I was a dinosaur once before. I absolutely love dragons. And let's face it, dinosaurs. <laughs> so my strongest totem no longer exists. At least not on the surface of the planet. <coughs> All of <Earth> theory. <coughs> Uh -huh. But I also have whale, manta ray, toucan, lion, uh, what else? There's a couple of others, but they get smaller and smaller, and I'm like, dude, I'm not trying to look for bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have all of this to deal with before you even get to the well, what happens when we die? Well, what happens when we're alive? <laughs> we haven't even figured that out yet. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I've found a few answers, but I by no means remember everything from every past lifetime. And I've tapped into a few of my past lifetimes, and I'm doing about the same I don't know and I can't say if that's good or bad because what if I was doing crappy before and if I'm doing about the same then brother I need some help because <laughs> it's been like thousands of years <laughs> but uh, I, I the feeling I get is I'm heading in the wrong in the right direction But I'm not headed in a steep enough ascent is the feeling I get. I'm like straggling. And I'm straggling for a reason because I'm the type of person that thinks no child left behind. And I don't feel like it's fair that I get this unfair advantage where I'm born with these insights where I can see certain things and hear certain things and feel certain things that are like signposts directing me to the perfect route 
And not everybody has that. And to me, that's not fair. And granted, maybe I nurtured this over lifetime, over lifetime, over lifetime. But to me, it's still not fair. It's like being born wealthy and watching everybody else flounder with no money in their pockets. And that's part of the reason why I make these videos is to try and share the wealth. That's why I'm not, I don't so much teach parlor tricks, but personal experience. So someone on the same path can say, you know, I can relate to this. I kind of went through this once. So maybe I'm not an idiot. Or, or maybe even, wow, I'm way past this guy. Have it any way you like it. But bear in mind, I'm only trying to get at the basics right now. I've come a lot further than what I'm showing in these videos, but you don't start off in college. You don't start off running. You crawl. You don't even crawl first. You kind of just wiggle on your belly. <laughs> and kick your legs a bit. <laughs> and then you figure out, hey, the knees go up under there. Yeah. And let's not forget, I'm not trying to hand this to you. I'm trying to make you think and say, hmm, how can I incorporate or what am I doing wrong? Or how can I do different? I don't want to be a helicopter parent where I'm watching your every move and hey, da, da, da. I want to be that free range parent where hey, just enough rope to hang yourself, kid. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but seriously. I mean, when we're touching base with a subject as serious as death, it's good to have a sense of humor, A. B, I could never find it in me to be sad when a loved one died unless I didn't get closure on something. And then it, I experienced that as a selfish feeling that I didn't get closure on the one. Wait a minute. They're dead, and you're worried about closure. That's how it hit me. Like, whoa. Maybe I, sh I should let my side of that go. Because that's selfish to want them to come back or return just so I can get closure. So I can feel good about this. If anyone needs to feel good about this, it's the person that's actually dying. And the best way to help them feel good about it is don't come at them with negativity. Don't come at them like they're already dead. Come at them like we're going to celebrate in the now. Every minute of your existence, I need you to know that I appreciate you now and I've appreciated you since I met you. I mean, it's a little more difficult for me because I live 2,000 miles away from the person in, in question, but... I still took the time to call her. I mean, I was nervous. I'm not going to lie. I haven't spoken to the woman in years, like um, 15 years, 14 years. I haven't spoken to her. But it felt really good to talk to her. It, I could just feel her spirits lift. And that I got the distinct impression that she was going to make it through this. She, I got the 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 distinct impression that she was just annoyed that it was happening. I, you, bear in mind, this woman just beat cancer. Literally, like a month ago, just beat cancer. And then this happened. So she's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, it's not going to go out like that. It's just it's not going to go out like that. And then people are, what's going to happen is when her family finds out, because and it just occurred to me that I found out before some of her own kids found out. <laughs> so when these other kids find out, they're going to be sending all this, Oh, poor mom, poor mom, which to them is like sympathy, but that's a negative. Oh, you're dying. You might as well say you're dead and kill them off. I'm not scared she's going to die. I appreciate the fact that there's infinite possibilities and anything's possible and I think she can make it. I think she can make it. I believe she can make it.
but I hope anything I've said has put her daughter's mind at ease because I know she watches these videos. She's like one of the few people that does. <laughs> but this episode, uh, it's for her. It's for her and her mom. They occupy a space in my life that I can honestly say was the, my favorite point in time on earth. I can honestly say that. And she is still today one of my favorite people. That woman was awesome. Like I said, I watched her get through heart surgery. I was there when she had heart surgery. She made me promise if I die, take care of my daughter. And I still feel responsible for her daughter. And we're both remarried. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, I said I'd get into why I haven't been making videos. Uh, I've been having this nagging sensation that I'm not, that don't make any videos. Don't make a video today. Don't make a video today. Like forcibly, someone's trying to get me to not make videos. And I caught on to it. And it's, when I first started making these videos, I could have had a broke leg and I would have made a video anyway. But now it's like the slightest little bump. And they say, ah, don't worry about it. Don't make a video. And so I decided, you know what? I felt that way today. Ah, uh, don't make a video. I'm making a video. And I'm going to stick to my format of Monday, Wednesday, Friday from now on. I'm going to give myself those two days off just because making a video every day of the week is difficult just because it's hard to come up with subject matter and maybe it's just time to move on from the basics which is perfectly fine but it's difficult to come up with subject matter five days out of the week so three days out of the week is still a little difficult but not impossible so that's why I haven't been making the videos because someone's been trying to get me to not make the videos and instead of just making the videos I've been trying to figure out who it is <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen I mean but I'm gonna make my videos I'm sorry if I'm pissing you off and when I say I'm sorry what I really mean is I'm not sorry <laughs> <laughs> If you get through your life and you don't piss off at least a few people, you're doing it wrong. So, and still I can sit here and tell you I don't have any enemies. Because I don't. If they dislike me, that's on them. They're not my enemy. I don't have any enemies. And if I did, they'd be much higher caliber than someone so petty as to get me to try and stop making my videos. Anyway. Where were we? <laughs> oh yes, death. It's not the end of it all. It's the end of the flesh being part of your journey. And only temporary. You'll get a new suit when you return. Now I can't tell you what that suit will be. You might be a blade of grass. Or a bumblebee. Or a bird. Or a horse. Or a tree. You could be one of a myriad of things. But you will get a new suit when you come back. I can imagine that it's easier to transition out of any other suit but this one. Because this is the only suit I know of on this planet that's taught that everything you do is a sin. And you're going to burn in hell for doing it. <laughs> Dogs don't lick themselves to clean it. They lick themselves because they can reach it. <laughs> Do you think they think they're going to hell? I don't think they think that. I think they think, oh, glad I can reach that. <laughs> <laughs> people are so caught up with what other people think, and that's what makes the transition so difficult. Because you spent your life so caught up in what other people think that you shut yourself out. Most, For the most part, you shut yourself out. Who cares what other people think? True freedom is not giving a fuck. Say it with me. 
I don't give a fuck. <laughs> now imagine entering the transition with that. But with the understanding that I've done wrong and I'm going to try and learn from that. And I'm not going to lie, the transition period can be scary. The first day of school for you was scary. There was a transition period of getting to run around all day and play and do nothing to having to go to school in this social structured, socially structured environment and learn something. The pressure was put on you to, to accomplish things now all of a sudden. You have to make friends. You have to do the work. You have to do the work well. So, yeah, there's a transitional period for pretty much everything. You start a new job. That nervous feeling you get when you start a new job. I don't care who you are, how much training you've had. When you start a new job, you're nervous. You don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to screw up. That transitional period that you go through could be considered hell because it's the most nerve-wracking, unstable period of that time is at the very beginning. So at the very beginning of your transition... It's going to be bumpy and scary and oh, but as you go through your transition, you're going to start to see that, oh, this ain't so bad and I got the hang of it now. This is just my 40 years of experience and telling you how I know it. You may experience it differently, but I need you to understand that if this woman does pass if your mother does pass Shindel it's not a bad thing you will miss her and she will be missed and she'll probably miss you but then she'll be closer to the understanding that we're not really separated anyway <laughs> Hold on to that. But, uh, yeah, we're kind of over the 30-minute mark. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and call it. I hope I was able to teach something today. Uh, I hope you can take something away from this, anything at all. I like this video. I mean, it's not a bad comeback video. But, uh, yeah death it's not really a bad thing <laughs> anyway if you have enjoyed this video please click the like button you can favorite it if you want uh, leave comments down below like I said this is supposed to be a discussion I say this every video is supposed to be a discussion leave a comment if you don't agree disagree don't do it rude because if you do it rude then I'm gonna be rude back because that's my pleasure <laughs> I don't let my spirituality get in the way of my shenanigans. You've been warned. <laughs> anyway, but if you'd like to keep coming back to get more information, or you just like the sound of my voice, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But until next time, you hang in there. <laughs>